Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the online Elim gathering. I would like to talk to you today about second chances. How many of you have experienced deviating from what you know is God's direction or command, and yet have been given another chance to correct your mistakes? Ilan sa atin ang nabigyan ng pangalawang pagkakataon na ituwid ang mga pagkakamali natin sa buhay? That is the story of the prophet Jonah. Let me read to you this very short verse that is nevertheless filled with meaning. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. We all know that the first time the Lord gave Jonah an instruction He ran away. Tumakas siya sa pagtupad ng utos ng Diyos sa kanya. Mayroon din mga pagkakataon na tayo ay hindi tumutupad sa mga kautosan ng Panginoon. At sa mga pagkakataon ito, tayo ay nagtatago, nahihiya, naguguluhan. But like Jonah, the Lord gives us a second chance to do His will. Sana ay huwag natin sayangin ang mga pagkakataong ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos. Magpasalamat tayo sa mga pagkakataon na ibinibigay sa atin ng Panginoon upang makapagsimulang muli. God is a God of second chances. He is a God of hope. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good evening mga kapatid and welcome once again to the online Elim Gathering. Good evening brothers and sisters. Um, maybe uh, some of you don't know I work in a university. So napakadami pong mga different activities na nangyari sa eskwelahan, ongoing pa rin hanggang ngayon. And uh, so nagpatong-patong na yung mga activities uh, face-to-face as well as online. So ongoing pa rin yung mga online activities. So I find myself when I wake up in the morning just surrendering my day to the Lord, surrendering myself, my burdens, everything that I have to do that day, knowing that the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast your cares upon the Lord for He cares for you. Ako naman, so I'm thinking na, hey, it's already the last quarter of the year. So I find myself asking again the Lord, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do for this last quarter of the year? I want it to be intentional. I want to make sure that, alam mo yun, I'm aligned with what the Lord wants. And so that's where I am right now, praying and seeking the Lord and just inviting Him once again, you know, to, you know, sa dami ng mga plans or, you know, ang mga, mga activities nga, yeah. sing sabi ni Ferdy. I'm just like asking, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And uh, to recalibrate ba, aligned. I want to be aligned ulit to what the Lord wants. And so, you know, any time is a good time to invite the Lord. And yeah. even right now at this present moment, you know, we might be up, we might be down, we might be feeling, you know, tinatawag na limbo, na parang hindi natin alam na or maybe you feel like naku, malapit na mag-end ng year, I haven't accomplished much. Uh, wherever you are, whatever it is, it's always a good time to invite Jesus into our hearts, into our minds, and into our situation. So let's just do that right now and invite Jesus. Amen? Amen. So let's so, come. Let's come in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus 
together in your name because you said in your word where two or three are gathered in your name there you are in the midst of them lord come into our hearts and our minds come into this time and space so that we may be able to receive your message for us your message of hope deliverance and salvation we pray lord that our hearts may be fertile ground upon which your word can be sown so that it may bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. And now let's prepare our hearts and our minds to listen to God's word for us through our teacher of the word, Sister Tavi Esguera. Go, Tab. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I'm Tavia Sguerra. Kamusta na po kayo? And the Lord has blessed us for the past months. Wow, what a blessing, right? And hindi pa ho nagtatapos dyan ang mga biyaya ng Panginoon. Marami pa siyang ibibigay sa atin. To start off with the, for the night, I have a question for all of us. Mahilig po ba kayo mag-sports? Alam niyo po ang joke ko po. Um, nung nagbigay po ang Panginoon ng gifts in sports, medyo na-absent po yata ako. Wala ho ako masyadong naha, na salok na, na gifts in sports. But I love watching volleyball. I'm so uh, fascinated with the game. You know, for those who are not familiar, there are six players in the court. And each one of them has their own roles. 
One of them is the blocker. May blocker po, meron din pong setter or tosser, and meron din pong hitter or spiker. Gustong-gusto ko pong manood ng game ng volleyball, lalo na pag nakatalo ang isang team. Ang medyo morbid po, no? But I want to see how the team will rally in from their um, setback sa katalunan nila, paano sila mag, mag-rally to victory. And one of my favorite um, player in the team is the setter. Niya yung, isiset niya yung ball para mahit yung spiker for a point or to, to win. So, crucial yun eh. Nagsiset up siya, piniplace niya, kumbaga, para ang spiker ma, mahit niya yung ball para madalo sila. Yung losing team who is experiencing a setback is being set up for a strong comeback. Tang twister po, no? Uh, so, uh, one who is experiencing a setback is being set up for a strong comeback. Ang life po, parang sports din po yan, di ba? Meron po tayong faces in our lives that we are stuck um, in our setbacks. Kung nalugi ang ating kumpanya, kung may sakit sa pamilya, kung medyo nagkakagulo, ang hindi magkakaintindihan ng mga magkakapatid, nag-aaway mag-asawa. You know, all of these are setbacks. Or one is experiencing um, sickness, merong karamdaman, matinding karamdaman, or uh, spiritual naman po. Kung, um, is there a sin in our, in our lives that is ni tayo masyado makag-move on from a sin? Paulit-ulit na lang tayo nagkaka- nahuhulog sa parehong situation? Or is there an addiction in our lives? These are setbacks. But God can use all of these things. He is setting us up for something greater. And tonight, God is encouraging each and every one of us that our setup is being used by God for victory. It is being used for something greater. What is the meaning of a setup? It depends on how it is being used. It, is, it can be a noun or an adjective or a verb. According to the Oxford Dictionary, if it is being used as a noun or an adjective, a setup simply means an arrangement. Yung uh, nakasetup na ang auditorium, or, a set na, or the setup of, of, of flowers. It is an arrangement. If it is used as a verb, it means, setup means to put things in order, plan, organize, create, or enable something. It is establishing someone in a particular capacity occupation or role i like to repeat that establish someone in a particular capacity occupation or role that is god's setup for us he is establishing us in a particular capacity in the bible there are a lot of stories or or accounts where god is setting up his people from Genesis to, to um, Revelations, ang dami-daming accounts. Tonight, we will just study two persons. Firstly, Joseph the Dreamer. Alam na alam natin ang story ni Joseph the Dreamer. For those who are not familiar, you can read it um, in Genesis 37. You know, his brothers sold him to slavery. Tapos na imprison si Joseph for so many years. Nakalimu- feeling niya nakalimutan na siya ng, ng lahat ng mga tao. Then he interpreted dreams. Uh, and then Pharaoh um, had a dream of um, fat cows being eaten by seven thin cows. He heard about Joseph para pa-interpret, pa-interpret yun. And... Um, Joseph prepared the land of Egypt for seven years of plenty and seven years of drought. And fast forward, nagkita-kita sila ng mga kapatid niya kasi yung mga walang pagkain sa Israel, pumunta sila sa Egypt to, to get some grains. In um, Genesis 45 verses um, 5 to 8, we read, But now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for having sold me here. 
So this is a conversation of um, Joseph with the brothers. It was really for the sake of saving lives that God sent me here ahead of you. The famine was, has been in the land for two years now, and for five more years, cultivation will yield no harvest. God, therefore, sent me ahead of you to ensure you a remnant on earth and to save your lives in an extraordinary deliverance. It was not really you, but God who had become here, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of all his household, and ruler over the whole land of Egypt. Wow! Isn't that a setback? It seemed like a lot of setback, but it was a setup for the people of God. The Lord used his um, Joseph's life and situation to save the land, the, the Israelites. Wow, isn't that a blessing? The second person that we will study is Simon Peter. You know, I like to think about it that Jesus had a um, love at first sight with Peter. Parang first time pala niya nakita si, G si ni, ni Jesus nakita si Peter. Alam na niya kagad ang future ni, ni, ni Peter. And in, in John, it says, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was the one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah which is translated anointed. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John, and you will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. John 1, verses 40 to 42. In the other versions, it says, Peter the rock. So alam na, alam na na Jesus. Yung magiging um, useful si Peter sa kingdom. He will be the rock. And he will establish the kingdom on, on him. And Jesus also prophesied that Peter would, be, would betray him three times. And we all know G uh, Peter really um, betrayed Jesus. And you know, I was thinking, ano kaya yung agony ni Peter? No? Nung, nung yung nag-deny niya si Jesus the third time, tapos nag, nag cock yung crow, siguro na bigla nag-flashback nag sa kanyang mind. Oh no! Sinabi ni Jesus that I would betray him and I did. Siguro, Peter must have felt bad. He, nasusok ka na siguro sa sarili niya. Kasuklam-suklam siguro feeling niya sa sarili niya. You know, Peter must have really lost hope and he was guilty. But Jesus found something in Peter. How, did I, how do I know that? After Jesus um, resurrected from the dead and he saw um, the apostles, in John 21, 15 to 17, we read, When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. Then he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had, to, he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Jesus wasn't depending upon what Peter possessed. He was depending on what he can make of him. Jesus knew what he can make of Peter. Set back, and Jesus was setting him up for a strong comeback. Tayo naman, in our daily lives, how do we respond to setbacks? I'm sure lahat tayo merong mga pinagdadaanan. In Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2, we read, Therefore, 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us. While keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. Wow! Two verses lang yun, pero very meaty. Himay-himayin natin yun. Anong sinasabi ni St. Paul? Number one, let us rid ourselves of every burden. Every burden daw. Let us surrender to the Lord everything that's weighing us down. Whatever situation we are at, whatever setbacks we have, let's offer to it to the Lord. Let's rid our burdens to the Lord. Number two, sin. Whatever uh, let us read of sin that in our lives, meron ba tayong compromises? Meron ba tayong, meron ba tayong sin? Meron bang sa uh, advice that we can't give to the Lord? Isurrender na rin natin yan kay Lord. Number three, persevere in running the race. Walang bibigay. Don't stop. Go lang ng go. Run the race. Hindi nga yung sinabi o sinadjust. O, oh, Ano nang, isi-isi lang, bunging, bunging, walk, walk muna. Hindi. He was saying, and he was adamant, run the race of faith. So talagang, go, 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 go. And number four, fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. Kasi if hindi ki Lord nakatuon ang ating pansin, madali tayong madisappoint. And when we disappoint, what does that mean? We are calculating things in our own mind, in our own being, hindi natin nasasama si Lord sa equation. That is when we doubt. That is when we we lose track of our, our in our run, in our faith, ki Lord. So, let us um, be encouraged by St. Paul na kaya natin itong gawin that whatever setbacks we are at, God can use all of these things to set us up for something great. Lastly, let me encourage you with, a ver- with verses that I've been um, reflecting for the past few days. I've read this w- so many times, but the Lord just impacted me so much with these verses. It is in um, Isaiah 61, verses um, um, 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim a year of the Lord's favor in the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. This is what I love. Verse 3. And provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for display of His splendor. Isaiah was talking about us being set up by God. You know, if in verse, as I was saying in verse 3, it says here, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Whatever um, we're going through, the Lord can use those and, to, and turn it to something beautiful. The oil of joy instead of mourning. If we are sad or we are depressed or we are mourning for someone who or a loved one who died, the Lord can give us an oil of joy. And then a garment of praise instead of a despair, a spirit of despair. In the New American Bible, it says um, a gracious mantle instead of a listless spirit. A listless spirit. And you know what? A listless spirit, walang buhay, walang energy, or if, you know, yung, yung so down. And when we are down, the Lord can give us um, a garment of praise. And then whatever setback we are at, the Lord is setting us to something beautiful. And at the end, it says, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord is encouraging all of us. 
life is beautiful whatever situation we're at he is using all of these things whatever situation circumstances in 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 face we are at the lord is using this to bring us up higher and higher in jesus mighty name amen thank you sister tabby for delivering to us god's message Healing Community's vision is to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. If you want to be part of this work of evangelization, please give your tithes, love offerings, and donations to any of the following accounts. We pray for all those who gave their tithes and love offerings. May the Lord bless you a hundredfold for your generosity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise to our Lady of Elam. O oh dear Mary, Lady of Elam, sweet and pure, pray that your Son Jesus will, to innocence and holiness, restore the hearts and minds of long lost souls. Pray that the seed of glad tidings sown in our hearts will stir us to great hope faith and love pray for the vision and intentions of the community and of the church that with the lord's watchful care and generous provisions they shall all be pray that a polluted world and all institutions will from a powerful outpouring of the latter rain experience the blessings of fresh living water a renewal of the spirit and healing of our land and of all nations Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hear the mission prayer. Lord, I make myself available for the ministry of missionary to be to receive on my knees so in the picture field within our borders or in the foreign soil for a single soul or for the multitudes empower me for abundant soul winning by your spirit make me an instrument of your love and mercy a witness bold and unashamed and an inspiring bearer of the good news send us deliverers technology and resources to reach the world. Help us break barriers, overcome obstacles, and penetrate new territories. That all the peoples of the earth may know that you are God and there is no other. And to all those we reach, Lord, raise them up to become your true disciples. Here, Here I am, Lord. Lord. Send, Send me. In, in Jesus' name. name. us all pray. Lord, thank you for the good news I have received tonight. My circumstances is not what it looks like. You are turning my setbacks around for my good. I declare that I am already victorious through you. With your grace, I have great expectations in my heart. I know 
I will see the fulfillment of your every promise. I praise you that you have already secured me victory and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. So dyan po nagtatapos na naman ang ating online Elim gathering. I'm sure that we were all blessed. And we pray for God's favor to be upon you and your family, your loved ones, all throughout the week. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Yeah.